So it's Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Eddie Hearn out in Monte Carlo. Big show on Saturday night. Has fight week been so far? And has Joe Caldina looking ahead of his mandatory defence or his big defence? It's good. Um, obviously, Cancun to Monaco was interesting. Very different over here. Um, it's a good card. Good international card. A um, couple of world title fights. I think actually Joe Caldina will be in a tough fight on Saturday. Vasquez looks up for it. Um, very well respected in, in the US. They think it's going to be a tough fight. Um, obviously, Noshinga, our favourite light flyweight, who's in fight of the year after fight of the year. Suleiman Sizoko and, and a brilliant rematch with Ramla Ali against Guzman, who looked fired up today at the presser. So really good card in Monaco and, and looking forward to it. And on the subject of Joe Caldino, what are the kind of mega fights out there for him? Now Shakur Stevenson's moved out of the division. I know that was one you guys were looking at. Who do you target now for Caldino? Should he get through Saturday night? I think the key is to unify. You know, I, I really believe he's the best 130 pounder in the world. Um, so I'm confident of him going into that fight with all the other champions. I mean, obviously, Sh Oshaki Foster, after his big win on Saturday, is a, a prime candidate. Navarrete is a great fight as well. I know people talking about the Lee Wood fight as well, potentially at the city ground. But I think Joe's got to look at the unifications. You know, I think he's good enough to win and beat the other champions. So, but he does also want the biggest fights out there. And, um, you know, whatever we can land in that respect, he'll, he'll be willing to do. And talking of Lee Wood, he seems to feel, looking at his socials, that he's landed that big uh, fight at home. Is that going to be a Josh Warrington rematch? So we're in discussions at the moment with Nottingham Forest and we, we're just finalising the dates with them um, and trying to sync that up with, with the zone as well. I think that the Josh Warrington rematch is front runner. I mean, we know that obviously last time out was controversial and it was an incredible fight. We know that Josh Warrington would probably bring, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand of his own up to the city ground. So we we need to go through negotiations for that fight. Obviously, there's the Joe Caldina fight as well. People talking about maybe even an Avarete fight or another champion. But um, I think front runner the Josh Warrington rematch. But but we just need to finalise the dates with the city ground and then hopefully we can get it made. And that'd be next year. You've obviously got a massive end to 2023 for Matchroom as it is. You know, Katie Taylor, big fight coming up. You've got Belfast. I could try and list them all, but I'll probably forget one or two. I think one that a lot of people want to know about, though, is December 23rd. What's the kind of percentage at the moment that a show goes ahead on that date for you guys? I think unlikely. I mean, you know, we we probably should have gone anyway. and We made the mistake of waiting for Fury I, I I really didn't feel like that fight would happen on December 23rd, but obviously now we know it's not. Um, AJ is still trying to get out in December, but I think more likely it's going to be early January now. Ben Eubank towards the end of January. Um, so I don't completely rule out December 23, but I think at this stage, more likely that we don't do a show. And Boxing News reported yesterday that Saudi, uh, the Riyadh season, are looking at another big heavyweight night for December 23rd possibly headlined by Francis and Garnu. Are you hearing similar rumours? I've heard a couple of things, yeah, today and, and out there. I mean, it's, it's very short turnaround. Um, notoriously, Saudi and, and events out there take time to plan. But, I mean, it depends how big the show is. If it's not a massive show, then maybe they go again on the 23rd. Um, it sounds like Fury Usyk looks like February. I, I'm guessing maybe even March now. So maybe they want to do a show in between and um, yeah, perhaps, but seven weeks on Saturday, you know, it's, it's really not a lot of time. Especially for someone who's not used to go in 10, three minute rounds, having come from an MMA. Yeah, I, I think it would be unlikely for Nganu to go again December 23, but you know, I, I don't know the man. And the names rumoured for Nganu, if it does take place, are Gilles Zhang and Joseph Parker, again, according to Boxing News. Either of those guys, do you think it could be something of a rude awakening for Ngannou? Yeah, terrible decision. I mean, like the, the one thing, like for me, Francis Ngannou has had the gift from the heavens, you know, and now he's got an opportunity to just have a massive fight and make massive money. But there's only really two fights that do that for him. One is Anthony Joshua and one is maybe Deontay Wilder. So if I'm Ngannou, I'm not risking it. I mean, he gets beat by Parker and Zang, in my opinion. So why why would you even think about taking a fight for small money? You know, you need to take the biggest fight out there. And listen, if you lose to AJ, you can fight Zhang or Parker after still. So, um, you know, I've not spoke to AJ about the 
the uh, Nganu fight. If it did arise, my advice would be take it immediately. Mm. But we'll put our name in the hat, I guess, and, and see what Big Francis wants to do. And you said a gift from the heavens. How much of what occurred on Saturday night do you put down to Tyson Fury's poor performance and how much to Nganu being better than a lot of people expected? Well, I think you definitely have to give him credit because uh, however poor Tyson Fury was, he still went in there and beat him. I mean, in my opinion, but whatever way you look at it, around, like, either way, you know. Um, so he's definitely better than we gave him credit for. But for me, he can still lose to any level heavyweight. Like, if you start backing this guy up and actually making him fight, rather than letting him do whatever he wants in the ring, he's not going to gas. He's not going to have a problem going the distance, 10 threes, etc. So I think... Tyson Fury probably fought the worst possible fight against Francis Ngannou that night. and But he didn't look himself. You know, his punch resistance isn't what it once was, I don't think. Um, he looked a little bit afraid at times. Part of that was probably because of the physicalities of Ngannou. And part of it was probably because of the paycheck he saw slipping away against Usyk. Um, but yeah, I mean, I know that he's had a bit of stick this week. But also, at the same time, if you're proclaiming to be the best fighter of the generation and, you know, you lose or nearly lose to a guy that's never had a fight before, you, you've got to expect the criticism to come with it. We'll talk about that stick that Fury's received in a minute, but just on Ngannou, I think you said in the build-up to the fury Ngannou fight that Johnny Fisher could take care of Ngannou in, I think it was six rounds, it might have been four. Mm. Do you stick by that? 100%. 100%. If you're in there trading with this guy and making him work at a high rate, I don't see him going the distance. He looked like he was ready to gas after three, four, five rounds. But Fury didn't do anything. After he got knocked down, he didn't even want to get close to him. So I'm not saying Ngannou's not impressive and I'm not saying he's not heavy-handed, but honestly, he could lose at any area at any area level of, of boxing. And, you know, this the MMA world now is going mad. Oh, is there any heavyweight that Ngannou can't beat? I mean, they're telling me that Ngannou against AJ is a 50-50 fight. Yes, please. Yes, please. You know? Now, Fury, we talked about him getting stick. The thing that he's got the most stick for this week appears to be a kind of changing of the goalposts in that he was giving and his team were giving uh, Usyk a few warnings about being ready for December 23rd because they'd get sued if he wasn't. He hinted Usyk at needing a 14-week training camp and that spooked them, I think. But now Fury's in a position he's been for a much tougher than expected fight and now he wants to fight later on. Do you yeah. think that stick's deserved? Yeah, I think it's quite funny because Fury knew that Usyk didn't really want to box on December 23rd. Yeah. And he smelt weakness. So he said, no, let's get him to fight on December 23rd. And then called him out all week saying, you better be a manual word, December 23, you be there, boy, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> And then obviously Usyk saw it all unfold and just switched it back on him and went, yeah, December 23rd, I'll be there. Man of your word, yeah? So, you know, Fury, I didn't, I know he didn't do the press conference and refused to talk to people after. And I think he'll take it pretty badly, the criticism. And I think he'll disappear for a little bit. I'd still be a bit surprised if February even worked, to be honest with you. But I think it gives him enough time, four or five weeks to lick his wounds and then maybe get back into camp. Did the Ngannou performance and the result affect your uh, prediction for Fury Usyk at all? Yeah, it did, yeah. I, I thought he was the favourite going into the fight. I don't think he's a favourite anymore. I, I don't think he's the fighter that he actually was. But I do expect him to be better in the Usyk fight. There was definitely an element that, you know, was either under-motivated or under-prepared against Ngannou. But still, it was a shocking performance. And um, it would certainly make me consider my pick if that fight actually happens. Now, I know you've reached out to Ngannou's team about making an AJ fight, presumably for next year, but AJ wants to get out. You've said December 23rd, unlikely, but probably January now. Who's in the frame for that outing? I think um, it's going to be a guy from the top 15, you know, whether that's a Hergovic or a Caballero or a Walin or somebody like that. You know, I think um, he really now, it's about activity. You know, we know that that big fight is going to come in March or April, whether that's in Ghana, whether that's Wilder, hopefully. Like, so the next one's just about keeping busy, making sure you keep improving with Derek James. You know, he wanted to have those one, three fights in one year. He's been nice and active. He's been really good for him. 
Um, but you never know what could happen. You know, if, if one of these site deals that we're discussing get done for February or March, he may end up waiting and going straight into that instead. What did you make of the um, retreat, including the darkness, uh, isolation? Is it something you'd fancy? I'm jealous. Yeah, yes, yeah. it is. I spoke to him about it. He said, he said to me, I recommend you only do it for two days, though, because it was very tough. You know, you imagine being in a dark room for four days, just getting slid food and water. So I think it's interesting, you know, stuff like that. He made a good point to me. When you talk about getting rest, you know, when you try and get yourself away from things, are you actually getting yourself away from things? You know, you're on your phone, you're receiving emails, you're answering WhatsApps, you're having a couple of Zoom meetings. And this was obviously a way to completely switch off. I quite like the idea. I quite fancy a go. And what do you make of him now he's come out of it? Does he seem like it's worked for him? Oh, he's a totally different person. No, I'm only joking. Um, no, I, I just, he just said it was great rest, really good rest, you know, time to just get my thoughts together. Don't forget, he's about to go into the, the biggest moment of his career, really, which is this back end, probably three to five fights. I think that's what AJ's, you know, thinking in his head. So he's ready to roll the dice on all these big fights. And I honestly think this is going to be his greatest moment, this little last run. Um, and, you know, seeing Fury on Saturday just gives you a little spring in your stick. I I've always believed AJ beats Fury. And lately, people have been calling me mad for suggesting that. It's interesting after Saturday, the amount of people that have said to me, you know what, I think AJ beats Fury. And I I've been saying it all along. Um, but maybe we'll never get the fight. Maybe we will. But um, AJ's ready for a big run. Now, on Eubank Jr. versus Ben, before we talk about kind of dates and venues, what did you make of Chris Eubank Sr. linking up with Harlem Eubank and coming out against the Eubank Jr. Ben fight? Yeah, I mean, there seems to be a little bit of a bad bit of bad blood there, but obviously now Eubank Sr. is representing Harlem. So he's calling for Harlem to fight Connor Ben mm. instead of Chris Eubank Jr. So, yeah, I can't say Harlem Eubank is a fight that we're really looking at for Connor Ben, but um seems like a little bit of um you know interesting vibes between senior and junior. But you know, for us we're just full steam ahead just trying to make that fight with uh, Chris Eubank Jr. Does it take a little bit away from it though, the kind of legacy aspect of the fight? Because I'm assuming Nigel Ben will be heavily involved in the promotion and, and maybe even the training. Yeah, maybe. And you may see Senior come back into that mould as well. But you know the fight's the first fight was really sold on the legacy of the fathers. This time around, it's got a whole new dimension to it. And obviously Eubank coming off his great win against Liam Smith, you know, the controversy around Conor Ben, the bad blood, he said this, you know, he said that. And um, I'm sure that the, the family element will come into it at some stage, but I just want to get him in a ring. You know, it's been a, a long time coming and hopefully now we're closing in. Now, I've seen the rumoured venues of Cardiff and Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Does that mean that some progress has been made with the Board of Control? Yeah, I've spoken to the Board of Control. I mean, I've told them what we're about to do. So, you know, they've been made aware of that. I mean, we know legally there's no reason why Conor Ben shouldn't be allowed to fight in this country. He's not suspended. Um, so we're going to make the fight and then we'll make our application to the British Boxing Board of Control. Um, and I believe they'll, they'll sanction the fight. Will you be applying, will Connor be applying for a British licence or will he come in on a foreign licence? I would like him to fight under a British Boxing Board of Control licence. I think a lot of it is around the timing. You know, whatever the board recommend, really, I don't mind. I mean, obviously, he has an international licence, so he can apply for permission to box. He could apply for his licence as well, which would be our preferred route. Um, but like I said, my, my priority is to make the fight, get it signed, and then we'll announce it for... Um, Spurs or for Cardiff and then it's over to the board Is there any chance the board attempt to block it and if so would you go abroad? Um, we wouldn't go abroad the fight's going to happen in Britain so that decision's up to the board you know if the board didn't sanction it then obviously the fight still goes ahead and I have to look at my position within the fight obviously it might be different for, for Calla um, but Absolutely. I want the fight to be sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control. Legally, I believe there's no reason why it shouldn't be. But the fight will take place in Britain. And um, that's that's a given. How much bigger do you think the fight's been made by all the events of the last year than it was initially? Probably twice as big. I mean, you know, it, it, I wish it never happened. And it was big last time. You know, it's the fastest selling 
and the biggest gate in the history of the O2. Last time, now it's going to be in a stadium which is going to sell 60,000, 70,000 tickets. Um, it's the biggest fight in British boxing outside of probably Fury against AJ. Um, like I said, it got it turned into a monster for some of the wrong reasons, but here we are. And, and now I just want to get these two in the ring. Great stuff. Eddie, really appreciate your time. Best of luck for the rest of the week. And Cheers, uh, we'll Danny. catch up when you get back. Thank you.